This is Jack Mixer and in this video I'm going to show you how to use it and what it can and cannot do. I have an entire video dedicated to QJack CTL which is this right here and this allows me to connect different things to each other but Jack Mixer allows me to control the volume of these things. In the Jack Graph I have no way of controlling the volume. Whatever is going out of here is going into here as it is. So here's how the mixer is laid out. On the left side you have your input channels and on the right side, you have your output channels or buses if you want. Each time you add a bus, it will appear right here in the channel strip and you can mute and unmute that channel going to that bus. So by default, all the channels go to all the buses. That's why when I created that new bus, it already has signal. And the way to remove a channel from the bus is to mute it on that bus. So I'll mute everything right here on the yellow that is called output, that is the bus and I have no signal on it anymore. If I unmute the channel, it goes to that bus. If I click on this P icon, it's for pre or post fader. With it on, it's pre fader. So regardless the position of the fader, the level will not change in that bus for that channel. So you can see when I raise and lower it, it changes level in all the buses except that one because I have clicked on the pre fader. Turn it off goes back to normal. So if you're focusing on one channel and you want to send it to all the buses, you can unmute vertically. So that's the channel and it's being unmuted or sent to all the buses. And on the other hand, if you want to focus on a bus, for example, bus number three, I will look at the row. So on this row, it's all bus three. I can mute and unmute channels. And this way I decide which channels go to bus number three. One channel to many buses look vertically. Many channels to one bus look horizontally. This is the fader. It changes the level. This is the panning left and right. This pre button is for pre fader metering. So even if I have the fader all the way down, I can still see the incoming level into the channel. If it's off, I see the post fader metering. Mute. It mutes the channel everywhere. Solo. It solos the channel everywhere. And here's where it's different from your usual understanding of solo because here the solo button is not soloing the channel in your monitor bus. It's solo in place. So it gets soloed in all the buses. That's why you got to be careful using this. There's different solo button. I'll show you in a little bit that solos the channel only in one bus. Finally, the mon button sends the channel to the monitor bus. So I have Reaper right here and I have connected all the buses to tracks on Reaper so we can see the signal. So let me bring down this fader. You can see the level is gone. Bring it up. Okay. And if I mute all these buses, we lose all the signals right here in Reaper. Obviously in real life, you would be connecting these buses to actual speakers or headphones or wherever you're sending them. But right now I just want to show you everything on one screen because you're not with me in the room. So this last track right here is showing me the signal of the monitor bus. Whatever channel I click monitor on, it will show me a signal that I would be hearing in my monitors. Now, if you noticed when I clicked monitor on a mono channel, it's only sending the signal out of the left side of the monitor. And that's just the way it is. There's no way to fix it. Even if you pan channel left and right, it doesn't matter. If you monitor a stereo channel, that's fine. And the monitor button is exclusive, so you can't monitor many things at the same time. Now, what if you want to monitor multiple channels at the same time without hearing everything else? We said that using the solo button solos the channel in all the buses, so that's not useful. And here's where we get into the bus solo. So let's say I'm gonna dedicate bus number five to be my monitoring bus that I'll use for my headphones or studio monitors to just know what's happening. I can double click on the name of the bus to get into the properties. I can rename it, change the color of it. But what we want right now is right here, input channels, display solo buttons. I'll turn that on and hit apply. You can see right now for for that bus only, there's a solo button on all input channels. So if I solo this, and it obviously needs to be unmuted, now I'm only hearing this channel in the monitor bus. You can see if I turn it down, I'm not hearing anything other than this. But if I remove the solo, I hear everything else. If I click on this channel, I'm hearing that channel only. If I click on this and another one, then I'm hearing both of them. Okay, so that's how you can make a monitoring bus and solo multiple channels and hear them all in that bus without using the mon button at the bottom. But the mon button is useful because you can press it to hear what a bus is hearing because there's no solo button for a bus. And even if the bus is muted, you can still monitor it. Look right here at this track. 
when I hit monitor, I can see a signal even though the bus itself is muted. However, with the channel, you cannot monitor it if it's muted. So I clicked monitor right here. I'll hit mute on it. The signal is gone. Now that you understand a little bit how the mixer works, I'm going to delete all the channels and start from scratch and show you how to create the channels, go through the properties and the routing. So I'll just close it and you can see it disappeared from the graph. And I'm going to open Jack Mixer. And here it is, completely empty. You can click on Mixer and add a new input channel or new output channel. And you have your shortcuts, Control N to add a new input channel and Control Shift N to add a output channel or a bus. So let's add an input channel. Right here you can name it Channel 1 or Piano, let's say. And you can decide if it's a stereo or a mono channel. If I do a mono channel and add it, you will have just one input. If I do a stereo channel and add it, you will have two inputs, left and right. And you can decide whether the fader starts at zero dB or starts at minus infinity when you create the channel. So maybe if you have some loud signal going on and you don't want to let anyone hear it when you're creating the channel, you can start at minus infinity. Or if you're just preparing at home, you can start at zero. And you can see when I add the channel, the fader is at zero. If I do at minus infinity, it will start at minus infinity. And if you double click on the fader, it will always go down to minus infinity. And right here, there's something called direct out. By default, it will be checked. So I'll add a channel. And you can see right here, it added a direct out for that channel. So if anything is coming into that channel, I have a signal. The direct out is that same exact signal that's coming in, going straight out of the channel to somewhere else. Like here, for example. So if I raise and lower the fader, it affects the level of the direct out. And if I click mute, it mutes the direct out. But that way you don't necessarily need a bus to send the channel to it. You can take the signal of the channel directly from it. So if you're just looking to add a volume control to a certain signal that you are routing in the jack graph, this is a very easy way to do it. If you don't want that direct out, you can just double click on the name of the channel to open the properties again and check off the direct out and hit apply and boom, it's gone. If you don't know how to use the QJack control, I have an entire video about it, very detailed, very long. You can watch it right here, but you need the jack graph in order to use the mixer. There's no way to route inputs from the actual user interface of the mixer. You're gonna grab whatever inputs you have. Let's say my microphone, I can grab it from my sound card and plug it right here. And this is my voice right now. And this monitor left and right is the built-in monitoring bus. So when you click the Mon button on a channel, it gets sent to that bus and out of the monitor left right. So you can see it right here in Reaper. And if I want to hear it myself, I can grab my sound card outputs and connect monitor left and right. And now I can hear my voice going out of here into my headphones. If I remove this, I'm not hearing it anymore. So with Control N, you can add an input channel. If you want to edit it, you double click on the name of that channel. And by the way, after creating it, you cannot change it from mono to stereo anymore. You do that when creating the channel. So if you really want a stereo channel, you're gonna have to delete this by going to edit and remove input channel, remove piano two. And then I do Control N again and create a stereo channel instead. The thing you can edit is the direct out. Even after creating the channel, you can decide that I don't want any more a direct out and hit apply and they're gone. Let's do an output channel right now. I can either hit Control Shift N or I can go to Mixer, new output channel. And right here you can call it a name, bus one, and decide if the fader is starting at minus infinity or zero and choose a color. With a channel, you don't have a color. With a bus, you do have a color because that's the way you can identify it over the channel. So if I hit add right here, I can see the color of the bus right here. If I have many buses, I can easily recognize them without necessarily reading the name. So if I change the color of that bus right here, it will change right here. And we saw this previously, you can display solo buttons for that bus, hit apply. On all the channels for that specific bus, you have a solo button that you can solo this channel in that bus and you can have many channels soloed. It's not exclusive. Let's talk about MIDI. Both 
input channels and output channels have MIDI control. And the good thing is that it has MIDI learn, so you can very easily assign MIDI buttons and knobs. So I'm gonna grab my MIDI controller and I'm gonna plug it into the computer right now. And as soon as I plug it in, you can see it appears right here in the Jack graph because Jack is a live system. You don't have to close and open anything. You can just hot plug things and unplug and everything will show up and will work. So I need to connect the output of my MIDI controller to the input of the jack mixer, but I can't use this one. This is a different color, meaning I cannot connect it to this one. They need to be the same color. So let me look for this, the MIDI bridge, because this is the same color. It means I can connect it to jack mixer. This first one is the Arturia Mini Lab. This is my MIDI controller. So I'm gonna grab this from here and connect it to the MIDI input of jack mixer. Now this mixer can receive MIDI commands from my controller. So I'll double click on channel number one. For the volume, I'll click learn and I will move a knob right here. I'll keep moving it until the window closes and it should be registered right here. It gave it number 74. So I'll hit apply. And now if I move this knob, you can see it's actually moving the fader of the channel. So let's continue. I'm gonna double click on it again and go to balance, which is the panning and hit learn. And I'm gonna use the second knob underneath it and I'm gonna turn it until the countdown ends and hit apply. Now you can see when I move the second knob, it is moving the pan left and right. So let's do the second channel, learn, and I'm gonna choose another knob and turn it. And also I'm gonna go to the balance, learn, and choose the knob underneath it and turn it, apply. Now this knob is controlling the pan of second channel, volume of second channel, volume of first channel, pan of first channel. And as many knobs and buttons that you have, you can do this for all the channels that your heart desires. Now for the solo and mute, on my controller, it's acting a bit weird. So if I hit learn and I press a button, some of the buttons don't work. Okay, this button works, but when I remove my hand, it unmutes again. So I may need to program my MIDI controller differently, but you get the idea. You can use MIDI to control the mixer without using your mouse. So to edit the channel, you can either double click on the name of that channel, or you can go to the edit right here, edit and edit input channel and choose which channel you want to edit. But it's much faster to just double click on the name, edit output channel, same thing, remove input channel, you can choose to remove an input or output channel from this menu. There's no shortcut assigned to it and you can't right click and delete, which I find to be something that slows me down. I wish there was a way to assign keyboard shortcuts. If you have a ton of channels, you can hit control minus to shrink them or control plus to expand them. When they're shrinked, you cannot read the name of the bus above the channel. So you'll have to rely on the color. When they are expanded, you can see the name of the bus right here. Pre-fader and post-fader metering, this is global. So if I click Control M, it shows me pre-fader metering for all the channels, inputs and outputs. And I hit Control Shift M and it turns it off. With Control X, you can clear all the channels on the mixer. They're gone. Now let's go to the preferences. You can hit Control P or click on Edit Preferences right here. If you want to save a template of what you did right here, you can choose a default path from here, so let's say I want to save them in the documents folder every time. You can change that later when you're saving the document. But what this does is basically when you hit save as, it will open the documents folder immediately. You can check confirm quit. So before quitting, it asks you, are you sure? Do you want to close the application? Otherwise it closes without asking you. Use custom widgets. It just switches the faders from a dot to a fader cap shape. Use custom view meter color, basically makes the meter a one solid color that you can choose what it is. I don't think that's really helpful, so I'll keep it off. Auto reset peak meter. If you have something peaking and you turn it down, how long is it going to take to remove that peak? So let's do, for example, four seconds. And I'm going to peak this right here, turn it down. One, two, three, four, and it's gone. If this is off, you peak and turn down, it doesn't go away. You have to click on it. This meter refresh period is how fast the meter is moving. So if I have a very high number, it's very slow. The signal changes, you can see it's kind of laggy. If I have a very low number, then it becomes really fast and super responsive. You can see right here. I think the default 33 is good enough. Meter scales basically changes the markings right here. So you have plus 15, plus 10, plus six, plus three, 
If I change this from K20 to K14, now it's plus 10, plus six, plus three. I don't have plus 15 anymore. Now this is important, this ladder scale. By default, the zero mark will be in the middle of the fader. And if you go up, it will go up to plus 30 dB. I don't know that I would want that much room to boost my levels. So the other option is linear 70 dB and it puts the zero dB mark at the top. So you can only reduce the volume. You cannot boost anything. The top is zero dB. Depending on your use case, you may wanna choose one over the other. Now, this is really important if you are using MIDI. Control behavior, either jump to value or pick up. If it's jump to value and the fader is right here and you have a different value on the knob and you turn the knob, it will jump, you see? It's jumping. Whereas if it's set to pick up, it will not move until the knob crosses path with that value. So let's say I do this again. I'll turn it down and I'm moving the knob right here. Nothing is moving. If I turn it all the way down, now it grabbed it because it passed through that value. So let's do this again. I'm going to raise this all the way up and turn the knob. Nothing is happening. If I turn it all the way up, it crosses value with it and it grabs it and now I can move it. So in a live environment, conference, whatever, if you don't want your signal levels to be jumping when you're using a MIDI controller, use pick up instead of jump. Now, if you install Jack Mixer and it's freezing up or crashing, you're probably missing a library. And that library is the Python 3 dash GI dash Cairo. And how did I figure this out? Whenever something is wrong, an easy way to troubleshoot is to open it through the terminal. Jack underscore mixer. And it opens the Jack mixer. Now, if there's this something wrong with it and it's freezing up, it will show up right here. It will say that some libraries are missing. And the library that is missing is this one. I put this command on screen so you can copy it. And then to close it from the terminal, you just hit control and C. This ends the process. Jack Mixer is a bit like the Llama Audio Mixer. Michael Curtis has made a video about it. I'll link it up here. But the difference is that with the Llama Mixer, first of all, it costs money. Jack is free. But they have implemented EQ and compression and effects. You can use third-party VSTs inside their mixer. With the Jack Mixer, you cannot. It's just a volume control and panning. But that doesn't mean that you cannot use plugins with it because there's something else on Linux called Carla. And Carla is a plugin host. So right here, I can add a plugin. And let's say I want to put a gate. Now there's no audio going through it because I need to connect it in the Jack graph. So as soon as I open this plugin in Carla, it appeared in the graph. And I can put it in between my physical input and the input of the channel on the Jack mixer. So I'll delete this connection and I'll connect my microphone to the input of the effect. And you can see right here, there's signal and the output of the effect to the input of the channel. So now I have a gate. If I turn up threshold too much, no signal will go to the mixer anymore because this gate is in between my microphone and the channel. It's not as convenient as having effects on the channel strip itself, because if you have a lot of channels and you want a lot of effects, it can get messy pretty quickly. Last thing I want to talk about is saving a preset. So if you click on mixer right here, you can save or save as, and let's call it a name, Dan Mixer, and I'll save it in the documents folder. So right now I can open different projects. I don't have to recreate all the channels every time. If I have a certain setup, I can just go to Mixer, open and find my file. This is the one I saved previously from the beginning of the video. And I can open another one. This is the one I just saved right now. And the same thing in the Jack control, by the way, in here you can save presets. I show you in the other video how to do that. So if you have the same setup every time, you don't have to recreate it. It's there, you can save it. With QJack CTL, this graph, it has persistence. So you can make it as such when you open the application, it loads the patch immediately. With Jack Mixer, it doesn't have that. So you will actually have to open the preset that you save. Same thing with Carla, you can save presets, but you will have to load them manually. However, Jack remembers the connections if you save them. So when you actually open these presets, QJack CTL will know where to connect each one of them. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button. And if you still don't know how to use the Jack patching, click on the video on screen right now where I explain everything in detail and I'll see you there.